welcome to the Daily Decrypt, as good a home as any for currency competition. I'm your host, Amanda B. Johnson, and today's episode is brought to you by BitShares. You may have heard of the Internet of Things, or IoT, which is a burgeoning reality in which our devices are internet-enabled and they can be controlled remotely. Slocket is a project working to take the IoT a step further creating the software which enables physical locks to be open and closed upon receiving cryptocurrency payments executed by smart contracts. Here to tell us more is Slocket co-founder Christoph Jentz. In short, we are creating locks which can be opened by paying money. We are of course using the blockchain for doing so by connecting the blockchain to Internet of Things devices. So basically any smart device out there which has an open API, and if they don't have an open API, then we can connect to the manufacturer to get one. Um, the reason why we are doing this, uh, there are several reasons. One, of course, is the sharing economy. To make it possible for someone to rent out a property by locking it with a smart lock, and then people can open it by paying money. So, for example, a door lock, which could um, be implemented in an Airbnb, so people could pay to open it. We also work with spike locks and padlocks, power outlets, so all sorts of things uh, which we connect to the blockchain. Uh, long term, our vision is much um, broader, thinking about mesh to mesh communication. So, for example, we work together with a German energy company called RWE. They are building car char charging stations for electric cars. So, we are connecting them to the blockchain so cars can pay their energy themselves. You, they, even to the step when, when you're waiting in front of a red traffic light, your car could be charged by induction and there's no time for swiping a credit card or anything like this. It's only like five or ten seconds. Mm -hmm. So you only pay five to ten cents for the energy you get there. So this is there the car needs to pay for the energy. So making um, it possible for things to pay and receive payments is something we aim to do. Neat. And now, how long has this been in the works? Is this something that you thought was possible uh, as early as as a few years ago, thinking like with Bitcoin, or did you were you thinking of this even before cryptocurrency was invented? Or so my first uh, notes I found in my notebook about this was about August two thousand fourteen. Okay. So actually, when I started working for Ethereum, um, but. I know I would need Ethereum to work for this, so I worked full time for Ethereum. And sometimes I did uh, on the weekend or on the evening did some working on prototyping and prototyping some smart contracts for this. And I think in summer 2015, I built a prototype with, together with my brother, the door lock. Mm -hmm. And then I think it was August or September 2015, Stefan Tool joined to work full time for Slocket. And yeah, and then I'm working full time for this now since beginning of the year. Before this, I also worked for Ethereum. I still do, but not as active as I have has been before. Mm -hmm. um, so it has evolved. Okay, and now you um, is Slocket. Um, is it intended as? Would it be correct to say it would be an Ethereum based DApp? Is that correct? Yes. Yes, okay. you could say this. It's a decentralized application because. Um, the locks we are building, of course, completely decentralized and autonomous, meaning they all work without us. It's a completely decentralized application, and it's actually open source and for anyone free to use and build on top of this. Mm -hmm. But we will add services around this, which, which is the way we make profit as a company. Mm -hmm. But the core product is open source and free for anyone to use, to copy, or adopt, change, whatever they want to. So the Slocket software, has it been deployed as a dApp on Ethereum? Yet, can I use it? Um, only for testing. So there okay. are no locks out there which are used in production. Um, Got it. So I, I would need an actual lock. Um, yes, I have one example here. Let me show this to you. Yeah. Can you see this? Um, yes, I can. This is a lock made by Fast Designs. It's called the Noki. Okay. It's basically a smart lock which you control with a smartphone via Bluetooth. And they have a developer version of it, which they made available to us. Mm -hmm. And so we are putting our software on top of this, and so you will be able to pay to open the lock. Um, yes, then we have door locks and, and power and other things. Um, but all of them, 
so you could say you work yes we have con each log has their own contract mm -hmm. so we have a lot of smart contracts actually on the blockchain but we only use them for testing so right now they are we are not in production mode and you cannot buy them on amazon or anything like this mm -hmm. but we have them working in our lab basically neat so so you're testing the software and you have people manufacturing these locks with chips in them that will work with your software and so yes. is it expected that once the locks are finished and shipped uh then th this socket will be usable yes so basically those locks you can buy them today without our software okay and the, and use them with bluetooth the so yes. the lock you have there can currently be used with bluetooth and when people unlock it with Bluetooth, are they sending an actual payment to it in some form of cryptocurrency or? In the current version, like this product, uh -huh. it works without blockchain, without payments. You can just buy it and with your app, only you can control it. Got it. just will add the ability to it that you can also allow other people to open it when they pay money. So basically we add the ability for the lock to receive payments. Uh, but this will all yeah this will be live we hope end of the year we'll have some products you can buy on amazon maybe where this is already implemented neat yeah well, that's exciting and now could slocket live on could slocket live on any blockchain or is there something that makes it ethereum specific well of course in ethereum you can make the smart contract because the <laughs> smart contract behind the log it's actually a simple one um but I cannot do this on the Bitcoin blockchain currently. Okay. The, the smart contract just says the following, there is a deposit in the price. And those two numbers are set by the owner of the lock. So let's, for example, say I use this as my lawnmower. And say I want to have $50 as a deposit and $1 per hour to use it. So then the user would come and check the, uh, scan the QR code. His app would show him this. So he would say, yes, I accept it. I pay the deposit. So then I can use it for as long as I want to. When I return it, it just counts the time on the blockchain and gives me the deposit minus the costs back, and the costs go to the owner. This is the smart contract which is implemented on the Ethereum blockchain, where this lock is connected to. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, just for my own knowledge, uh, you said that the smart contract that that lock requires to work um, is not currently possible, for example, on the Bitcoin blockchain. What is it uh, that Ethereum has, which Bitcoin does not have, which make the lock possible? The Turing complete programming languages, which, uh, which can observe the state, can store some data, which belongs to a certain account. So maybe that you could do it in some way on the Bitcoin blockchain. I would have need to check. Maybe it's actually possible, but not in this current form. In a much, much simpler version, maybe. Um, but why should we do this? If you can do it much easier on the Ethereum blockchain. And then there comes the next thing, which is definitely not possible on the Bitcoin blockchain. We are building a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization, which we use to fund ourselves. Um, and they actually will get a reward each time a slot is used. So we have implemented as a fee, currently 1%. So when someone is using it, 1% of this... Um, costs which user has to pay goes to this deo and this deo is a completely autonomous organization where anyone can send money to to buy tokens of this deo and mm -hmm. in the deo they can vote to send us money mm -hmm. so we can build a product in this product we have implemented this reward rule the deo gets rewarded when the products are used mm -hmm. and such a deo could not be implemented on the bitcoin blockchain it's way too complex all right so people using the slocket dap uh, would have a certain amount of ether that they are charged to use the DAP, and 1% of that ether would go to the Slocket Decentralized Autonomous Organization account, DAO. Is that right? Yeah, that's about correct. Yeah. Okay. Say it like that. Sponsored shout out from Change Tip the popular social tipping service, which is soon to be a wallet. ChangeTip is also a sponsor of the upcoming Blockchain Madness Student Tournament, which will be a live global game show style competition among the crypto savviest students at six universities. You can learn more about it and other projects which ChangeTip finds most tipworthy at changetip.com slash tipworthy. I just wanted to ask your opinion because I didn't know that you had been uh, an Ethereum developer just for the sake of Ethereum before Slocket. Uh, so that's interesting. And I wanted to ask you, okay, so 
um, with the with the nodes with the Ethereum blockchain that is going to be hosting uh, the data for for lots of DApps uh, potentially, including at least the Slocket DApp. Um, what are we talking? A super large blockchain, and um, are are you have you given any thought to what the incentives will be for people to run a blockchain as potentially large as Ethereum's? So the incentive currently is, of course, the mining, they get Ether. When it comes to the size, um, first of all, not everything needs to be stored on the blockchain. When you create a decentralized application, you need to be very careful about what processes are critical to be run on the blockchain in a smart contract which can we run off chain with other techniques other techniques for example for this slog there are only two transactions actually on the blockchain when you're renting it when you're returning it two transactions that's it anything in between open and closing you just send signed messages not on the blockchain so we actually do not store that much data on the blockchain only the most crucial and important data so therefore we are not um, filling up the blockchain with data of slog all the opening and closing messages are just messages sending peer-to-peer -peer without touching the blockchain, actually. They're just reading from the blockchain to see who is currently allowed to open this lock. That's all what they need to do. Um, so for incentive, yes, they might not get a reward, and currently this works just fine. But of course, the blockchain will grow, and we need a long-term solution for scalability. So we will not have a problem with scalability for the next couple of years, I guess, like one or two or three years, depending also on which application is running on it. But I think Vitalik's solution of sharding is the one we will use in a couple of, I don't know how many, how much years he needs to implement it or we need to implement it, but let's say one, two or three years at most. And then I hope you will have a scalable, scalable Ethereum blockchain. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, right, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And uh, in that same vein, uh, do you have any thoughts on the planned but indefinitely timed switch of proof of work to proof of stake within Ethereum? Yeah, so this will happen and it has to happen because we have something, I call it a difficulty bomb or uh, there, you could call it, give it different names. But in the current Ethereum blockchain, there is a rule implemented that a difficulty will grow exponentially at a certain time. This will make the blockchain unusable because it's too hard for any miner to find a block. So therefore, there needs to be a hard fork on the Ethereum blockchain. When this time comes, the Ethereum Foundation will offer a fork or a new client where a proof of stake is implemented. Proof of stake is superior to proof of work in the sense that, first of all, it's good for our environment. It saves a lot of energy. Um, second, it allows already to handle more transactions. So it's actually the first step towards scalability. It's not the final step because it just gets better maybe by one order of magnitude. It's not completely scalable, but we need it as a first step. And I am very convinced that all the miners or all the people will update to the new version. Very there good. it comes in about one year, I guess. All right. Well, uh, I think that that is just about all of my questions. Um, do you have, I guess, as a closing question, do you have any sort of wild sounding predictions for what uh what smart objects you know the internet of things or whatever in which objects can pay one another do you have any sort of uh predictions of how this can or will be used in the future that maybe doesn't get discussed a lot elsewhere well i think of completely autonomous objects for example think about a drone um a drone could receive payments to pick something up and deliver it to a place. With this payment, the drone could fly to a charging station to charge himself. Even if it needs re replacement or needs to be repaired, it could fly to someone to repair themselves and they have money to pay. So I, you could think about a completely autonomous drone or completely autonomous car, that a car manufacturer still owns it and makes money but because people are using it. But a car could, yeah, could pay for its electricity, could pay for when it needs to be repaired and the user paying it when they use it. So I think this mesh-to-mesh -mesh communication will end up a new kind of a new level of interoperability between objects, and of course also between humans because we can interact with those objects. That's what I see in the future, and that's I think the exciting thing that the blockchain technology enables those objects to enter 
into agreements to receive payments, to send payments. This is a complete new level of IoT because currently IoT is just about a lot of data and making sense of data. But this is a new level when they are able to do such things. So that's what, I, what we hope to do. But of course, I think the first use case is decentralizing the sharing economy. And I hope everyone is, and I invite everyone to participate in our DEO. Uh, because it's actually the first real DO which will hold hopefully a consider considerable amount of money. And if you participate in this DO, you can vote on what we do, which projects we work on and send us money to do certain things and you will get rewards when all those things are used. So I think it's also a, uni a unique opportunity for everyone. How does somebody participate in this Locket DAO? Do you have your own tokens within Ethereum? Yeah, so we will very soon announce the starting date when we make a sale. Uh, basically, can, people can put Ether in the DO and get DO tokens. Uh, we also work together with exchanges or like Shapeshift to accept almost any cryptocurrency. But it's, it's not just like a token sale, a classic one, where we just get all the money because we actually get none of the money. The DO keeps the money and the one sending, buying DO tokens stays in control of the money. They then, after they have funded the DO, they then will vote who to give money to. So they actually could say we don't like Slocket and give the money to someone else to work for us. But we of course hope we make the first offer to the DO, what we will build for them and hope they will give us money. But it's a unique um, system of raising funds by creating a really a decentralized autonomous organization. But so it, it will start very soon. And then those tokens have the potential to pay dividends on DAO earnings, is that correct? Yes, you could say so, mm -hmm. basically, because if they accept our offer, then we would include this reward system, mm -hmm. which gives them something like dividends. Mm -hmm. And would yes. the dividends uh, be issued via human? Like, would it take someone on your team to pay out dividends? Or would that all take place on the blockchain? And whichever Ether yeah. had been paid to use the Slocket dApp, a percentage of that would automatically get kicked out as dividends. Exactly. They I mean, if our company would not be around anymore, the, the lock is paying the DO. It's completely with, happening without us. So that's, I usually don't call it shares and dividends because um, we don't sell any shares of our company. Our company is not paying out dividends. It's just the DO makes an investment into a product and this product will pay them. And this will, product will continue to pay them as long as the product is alive or not destroyed, but not depending on our company. So we are not paying them at all. The product is doing so. We just implement the rule in this product that each time it is used, mm -hmm. the DO gets paid. Well, that is fascinating, Christoph. Tell, uh, do you have? Do y'all have like a Twitter account or something? Like, how can people basically? Yes. How can people stay updated for when those locks actually come out and are usable? First, go to our website, slock.it, and there's a mailing list you can contribute. We have a Slack where you can go on discuss. We have over 1,600 people on our Slack to discuss those things. So a lot of people there. And on Twitter, we have um, at Slocket Project. You can follow our tweets. Very good. All right. Well, thanks for your time, Christoph. Have a lovely day. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, have a good day, too. Today's episode is brought to you by BitShares, a currency whose wallet comes with a decentralized exchange where user-issued assets can be swapped. And you can even try issuing your own user-issued asset. Yes, I am not kidding. Whether the tokens represent tickets to an event, shares in your company, or membership in your club. You can learn more about how to do this and get your own BitShares web wallet at openledger.info. And we at the Daily Decrypt, both the manservant and I, would just like to give a hearty thank you to those of our viewers who we notice are tipping us in various cryptos, some of which we notice come in on a regular weekly basis, which probably means you're using the Pro Tip browser extension. So thanks so much. We are happy and honored to serve. So